Motor Funner here. It's Saturday afternoon and not such a bad day. I started out today washing the car in the rain while it was drizzling a little bit. And then it dried up and I managed to get the car all shined up. This is a 2008 Malibu. Uh, we've had it for since it was new. This car comes in four different styles. The LS, the LT1, LT2 and the LTZ. This is the base model LS. So stock this car comes with a lot of options. Uh, it comes with six airbags. It has keyless entry system. It has electric power rack and pinion steering. Traction control. It's got disc brakes on all four wheels. Four wheel independent suspension. Thing rides really smooth. It uh, has a little bit of a sports car ride to it. Uh, has air, cruise, and the base model comes with uh, telescopic steering. Also has the tilt. This car's never had a tune-up yet. At 111,000, I'd say that's pretty sweet the way it runs. It's great. So this is the base model. It has the 2.4 EcoTech in it. It's got uh, variable valve timing. It's a pretty peppy little engine. It's, uh, Got a nice battery cover there, everything's tucked away nice. And the one thing that I really like about this is uh, that's where the oil filter is right there. Right on top. Nice and easy to get at. And it's a paper oil filter, it's not a canister filter like you would usually see. So there's less waste. Something I really kind of like was uh, Malibu has always had a tradition of having a forward style dashboard on the passenger side. and. They've continued it with this style, which I was quite impressed about. The glove box is so stuffed full right now, I'm not even going to... Well, I will open it. And you'll see there is very, very, very little space in that glove box. I don't even have room in there for uh, owner's manual. That's one thing that I don't care for on this car. The seating is really comfortable. Uh, seats sit very very well and uh, the driver's side is electric it's all adjustable and it's got the lumbar in it it's very comfortable has a lot of space in the back of the car too for seating so this is where I have my owner's manual because it doesn't fit in the glove box it's a good thing it has those nuts on the back of the front seats Keep maps and stuff in that one and has a little compartment here. Has a jack right there. Nice comfortable seating in the back here too. Headrests. I'm not the world's tallest person, but my legs aren't even touching the seat here and seat's fairly far back, I'd say probably at least halfway. Lots of room in the front. The dashboard is not too fancy. It's a very user-friendly dashboard. It's easy to read everything and easy to use. Give it a start here. Now the first thing you're going to notice is it says SVC tire monitor is, has a warning there and that's my uh, symbol right there for the tire monitor. I've got one that's not working. So these are the buttons here and I hit the uh, info button and then that message goes away. This runs your cruise and then this button here is to uh, change your display and this button here is to reset. So the information that it's got on there is your kilometers and the outside temperature. 
you can have trip A and and uh, you hit the bottom button there it resets it trip B so you can have two separate trips set on there fuel range I'm almost on a full tank of gas right now it's telling me that this tank will last me 724 kilometers the average mileage that I'm getting right now is 8 point liters per 100 kilometers that's the average overall that this car has done since it was new I've never reset that and right now since I'm at an, at an idle it's telling me I'm using 99 liters per 100 kilometers but when you start driving that changes and it usually sits roughly at around 8 this tells you the average speed that this car has driven and uh, overall since we've purchased it this is uh, average speed that we've driven it's done a lot of uh, highway miles there's my oil life monitor 18 percent and the tire monitors right now that's in uh, metric and kilopascals 224 and these are the rear tires and the one monitor is out so you can tell that it's not working This car's got a huge trunk. That's with my head touching the tip of it here, the end. I can get almost all my legs in there. That's just incredibly huge. Uh, another thing this car has is a key on the dashboard, which hasn't gone out of style, but now it's back again. And we're just gonna take it out for a little drive now. So this car has uh, got 165 horsepower, but on takeoff like this, it's uh, pretty good. Has a lot of pickup power behind it but from a dead takeoff it really doesn't have a whole lot of pep so just to demonstrate I think it's been detuned a little bit for uh, the takeoff because it sure doesn't seem to have a whole lot of power right off the dead end so I'm gonna do two passes one with the traction control on and one with the traction control off cylinder I'd say it's not too bad on highway it's a whole lot better when you push her down she really goes so it has really good passing power when you really need to pass somebody it doesn't waste any time getting there so when you buy a car most people have a problem with trying to find a place to put their sunglasses and one thing that I really do like about this car is when you take your sunglasses off you just have to open up this and everything fits in there nice it's got room for pens and a little slot there for them and if you close it up you got a good place for your shades so this car uh, being that it's three years old and it's got a lot of mileage on it already we've had a couple of issues with it 
the front wheel bearings, I don't know if you can hear the little bit of a howl that's in the car right now. We had them changed once at uh, 60,000 kilometers, which was under warranty. And it was no problems with us getting them replaced. But now it's starting to s sound like they're uh, going again. So probably at uh, 120,000 we'll be due for another set of wheel bearings. So another problem that we've had with this car is uh, it's developed a clunk in the steering wheel. Hopefully you'll be able to hear it. I'm just going to turn the corner. Didn't do very much there. There it went. That's it. I don't know if you can catch that or not. There is a few little things that are annoying in this car, and um, this cup holder here. We try to put a second mug in here, and we got some pretty tall coffee mugs, and it always seems to want to hit up against this this compartment here. And this compartment is made to open in two places, and with that mug being there, this is next to impossible to uh, get at that anything. It's made to open on the top here, which is nice. You can put a lot of small things in there. And then it has the bottom compartment there. But if your mug's too big, it's pretty much useless. It does have another coffee holder in the side here, but same predicament. You got a mug that's too tall, it just doesn't fit. So all the compartments in this car are made just a little bit too small for everything. So, this car, it handles a lot better than uh, most uh, luxury cars would. Has a little bit of a rougher ride than uh, some of the higher end luxury cars. Thing handles like a dream around corners. But overall, it's been a very reliable car. Very dependable. And aside from those uh, issues that we've got right now, and um, being that they were covered under warranty, we really haven't spent anything into this car aside from the regular maintenance. And my wife really likes the car because it is so quiet. When you open up a window, it makes a huge difference in the sound. Especially if you're beside a transport truck and you crack the window, the difference in the noise is just incredible. The car is very, very, very silent from the inside.